you. Uh, he's a lecturer in entrepreneurship at the Institute of Management Studies, Goldsmith University at the University of London. He received his PhD degree in management and organization from the School of Economics and Business, University of Ljubljana. His research interests include digital economy, high growth firms, entrepreneurial ecosystems, and research methods. Dr. Zupik's research has been published in peer-reviewed journals such as Organizational Research Methods, Journal of Business Research, Management Decision, and European Management Journal. Dr. Zupik especially is recognized for his contributions in devising and implementing innovative research methods derived from machine learning and information systems such as topic modeling and bibliometrics, especially in the field of management research. Before entering academia, he founded a consulting business and worked as a project manager, software engineer for tech startups. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for, for being here. Um, so as you know, as you have heard, and we have met online before, uh, I'm Ivan Zupic. I'm a lecturer in entrepreneurship at Goldsmiths University of London. Um, reasonably small creative university in South London, which is part of the University of London uh, um, system as well. Uh, so today, I will have a, a workshop um, on improving citations and impact. So, um, and workshops meaning that uh, it will not only me being that will work. <laughs> so I'll make you work too. So, uh, um, so I'll, have, um, I'll have an entry presentation at the beginning. Um, so after that, uh, we'll try to maybe assemble groups. Uh, so I'd, I'd say if we could assemble groups that are, that are diverse from, let's say, uh, early career academics to mid-career to, um, to late career. Right? So those who have experience, those, those who have a little bit of experience, so you, have, so you can exchange your, um, your ideas. Yeah. Uh, so, so basically, uh, I'm not here just to tell you how it is, but it is also for, for all of us to learn from, from each other, because I'm sure there's many great ideas uh, in the room, and I think this could be, uh, could be shared among, uh, uh, among us. Yeah. Uh, so <clears throat> first, I'll start, I'll start by citations. Right? And citation, basically, the definition of a citation is that it's a, a reference to previous work. Um, and there's a, there's a saying that uh, we can trace back to Merton in 1965, that uh, if you acknowledge the past work, you're basically standing on the shoulders of, of giants. Right? So you're acknowledging those, those uh, people, those scholars who have come before you, uh, and you do that by, by citing their work. Right? Um, so, so this kind of citations, uh, we then, we look at them as a representation of impact. Right? So we'll, we'll see later that impact is a little bit more complex thing than just, uh, just a citation. But uh, I mean, citation is something that is, uh, that is easily measured. Right? That's, uh, that's one good thing about citation. So we can measure it. Uh, we, can, uh, we can connect authors with the citations. Uh, we, can, uh, um, we can trace how knowledge actually progressed uh, over time. Um, and we can measure, measure the productivity of scientists as well. Right? So this is one of the, uh, one of the things uh, that cita citations also does. Right? And uh, there, is a, there is a, let's say, belief that highly cited articles um, do represent better research. And do, literature about citations actually supports, uh, supports this kind of notion. Right? Um, and also, the citations have been used for other purposes, like uh, influence reviewers, increased citation rates. So, citing work is not only about acknowledging past work, right? uh, but is, uh, there's also other motives uh, behind this. Right? So, you're, you can both acknowledge an influence and you can um, exert an influence on others. For example, reviewers, editors, and, uh, and so on. Um, so here's a, um, here's a framework uh, developed by um, uh, Mandar 2022. So this is, this is pretty fresh article that gives you um, a kind of a typology for different motives uh, to cite. Right? 
And the, the most common motive that we, um, we encounter or we, um, we think that the citations actually uh, um, incur is, is epistemic, right? So this is about standing on the shoulders of giants, right? Acknowledging previous work, right? And this is, let's say, common understanding of citation, right? The, the most mainstream um, understanding, right? So uh, this kind of contribution uh, can, be, uh, can be positive or, or negative, right? So it, uh, it can be acknowledging past work or trying to refute past work, right? Maybe you think this article is very, very wrong um, or there's some mistake in it, and you are citing it because you want to, you, you want to correct what those author, authors did wrong. Right? So, um, one thing that also we don't know from the, from the citation is, is why, why the authors actually cited this. Right? So, we, we, we see that they cited past work, but we don't know whether it is positive, it is negative, or uh, what kind is it, it is. Right? So, so the consequence of this kind of citation gives us that we can, uh, we can acknowledge, we can uh, uh, identify the importance of this kind of contributions. Um, and we can also figure out how the, how the knowledge progressed, how, how the research field, uh, what was the research field evolution uh, over time. Um, so that's, that's the first, uh, first basic motives for, for a citation. Um, the second one uh, is basically uh, rhetoric. So here, um, you, want to, you want to convince readers. Right? So you want to, you want to build a, an argument. And when you're building an argument, uh, you use the, the claims and proofs and everything that come before you. And this, this, kind of, uh, um, this kind of motive for citation is more of a rhetorical nature. Right? So you're, you're basically building, a, uh, building an argument. Um, so here. Uh, what you're looking for, you're looking for the development of this kind of ideas and maybe trying to put together and fit together uh, different kinds of, uh, of previous work, right? So uh, this, could be <clears throat> this could be done in a more, let's say, thoughtful, convincing manner or could be done in more ritualistic manner, right? Sometimes certain fields cite, uh, cite certain authors and it's not, uh, uh, it's not that they go and read them, the, the basics of, of, of documents that were published maybe 100 years ago and so, but I don't know, for example, entrepreneurship would cite Schumpeter very often. But uh, uh, I'm not sure every time someone writes a paper, they go reading Schumpeter. But they will cite them at a certain point because that, was the, uh, that, is, uh, that is the convention. Right? Uh, so another. Another uh, motive uh, for citation uh, could be symbolic. So here uh, you, want to, uh, you want to symbolize or you want to basically show uh, your, um, how you belong to a certain group. Right? So for example, um, in institutional theory, you have, you have various strands of research that they don't li really like each other. So, uh, so if, you, if you publish a paper, and you're citing the wrong, uh, the, the wrong uh, uh, let's say, stream of research, and then uh, you send it to a journal that belongs to, let's say, the other uh, so-called camp, uh, that, uh, that's, uh, you'll, you're not going to get published. So sometimes you have to know this kind of uh, things in the back that are happening uh, and who, who belongs to who. And, some, and this, these are not all, always obvious, right? You cannot really always separate them from, from reading the, the research, right? So sometimes uh, you have to go behind, you have to, uh, you have to know who, who are people publishing in them, what they think, what, what are the camps in the, um, in the research stream, and so on, right? So in this kind of way, so be, with some symbolic citations, you, you symbolize the attachment to a certain line of thinking um, in the um, in the research stream. Um, and uh, then you have the economic, um, so-called economic uh, motive for citation. Um, and economic is basically just to, uh, to influence reviewers or influence editors, right? So this is the main motive here is to provide rewards to the researcher. So the, and this is, uh, this is get basically getting published. Yeah? 
So if you, if you send to, uh, an article to a certain journal, you have to cite that journal. Right? If you don't cite that journal, that, uh, that usually won't look good uh, when editor gets it and, uh, and you might not get published. So you will cite at least a couple of papers from that journal to show that, uh, that that paper belongs to the journal. So you um, also, you might try to think who will be the reviewers of your paper. And you might want to, to cite those, uh, those reviewers, right? So who, are, who will potentially look. Or even reviewers might suggest that you have to, you have, you have to cite that, their papers, right? This is, this is something that, that is not nice, but it, it happens. It happens uh, quite often, actually. It's very difficult to find out the reviewers. Sorry? It's very difficult to find out the reviewers. Um, I mean, you mean uh, when you send it to, to a journal? I mean, it depends. Uh, sometimes you can, uh, you can figure it out. Right. Uh, you you see. I mean, you you see. You can see the editorial board, and if you know that certain members in the editorial board are publishing in what you're you're publishing, then it, you can be almost certain that that this will be sent to them. Right. So this is this is one way. Um, but uh, but other you cannot really know exactly uh, who will uh, who will get it. <clears throat> So these are, these are the different motives uh, of citation. So in, in reality, uh, how citations basically come is, uh, is not so clean as uh, just epistemic look at the citations would, uh, 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 would like to, to think, right? So researchers cite, they have different motives, they, um, they do different things, and we have to take into account when we're, th when we're thinking about citations, right? Many of the journals also ask, do you want to recommend uh, uh, what you put in your reviewer? Yeah, yeah, they do. Do you want to recommend when they actually send to the reviewer or is it for their, for their database? Uh, no, I mean, they, sometimes they do send it to the, to the reviewers, but no, not, not really always. It's, it's a little bit of a, of a gamble, right? So, so sometimes they do, and, um, and, uh, but I, do, I don't have any data on how, what, what are the percentages or such. Yeah. Uh, so another question is about self-citations. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. then we will, they don't take those into consideration. They sometimes even certain journals also yeah. dissuade self-citations. So what is the line at citing yourself? And is it ethical or? Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a fine line. I mean, basically, I would say uh, the, how, how ethical it is is, uh, is basically how are you writing about the kind of research that, uh, so I don't know, for example, I have a book chapter on business models, and we were we were then doing a bibliometric analysis of business models, and we were citing that book chapter, which I think is okay. But if I have a, I don't know, I have a book chapter on uh, on venture growth, and then if there there is no business uh, that citation doing that, I, I don't think that that would be ethical, right? So as long as you're writing about the topic that you published your previous research, then it's uh, I think it's natural that you build on your uh, your previous research. Right? Uh, I once got a. Mm -hmm. journals. Um, they had actually asked the author for a reference, like you know what uh, Gopal you just asked. Mm -hmm. And that person who was sending a paper to the journal actually gave my name, and the paper actually came to me. Mm -hmm. So my question is, uh, how is it line and review then? Because obviously we would have exchanged notes, right? Yeah, I'm. Uh, that's that's something that happens. Yeah, um, I mean there. Um, Often, often the uh, researchers who submit the the paper would uh, re would recommend someone that they're vaguely connected with. Although usually there are some rules uh, you shouldn't have collaborated in the past uh, uh, past couple of years. But uh, but I didn't th think this is this is uh, let's say a gray zone uh, what people do. So I, I wouldn't say it's uh, right or wrong. Uh, exactly, but uh, but yeah, this. Uh, yeah, so I asked that author whether did they ask for any conflict of interest sign off or not, mm -hmm. and uh, that author said that no, there was no request for even a conflict of interest. They just wanted a reviewer's name, name and the paper. Came mm -hmm. Yeah. So but you are not supposed to know the author, right? We're not supposed. Is that what I'm saying? So did mm -hmm. the author get in touch with you? But so they report referring my name. They he called. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is uh, this is on a this is let's say on the gray zone on, on a, this is on the limit. That's not the right thing to do. This is not gray. This is I think the author did something which he actually should not have done. Mm -hmm. 
No, the author, the author gave the name because the journal asked him for it. But the author should not, the author should not have contacted you. Hmm. The, the author can give it in. But sir, is the onus on the journal to make sure that whoever the author is giving has list of The journal cannot make sure that you have not put in that. No, because whatever I recommend, I have given it by the author. Why shouldn't I go and talk to the reviewer and say that, okay, you may get my paper. No, but if it's a blind, so, so, the journal is 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 Right, so so they so I'm not sure. I think it depends uh, how much editors actually choose those reviewers, because I think they're aware basically. They're they're aware that people will try to game the process at least a little bit, right? So they they would. My, I imagine that the editors would check what is the are there, is there any connection between uh, between these authors or not? Right? The, the editors can only establish the connection which is available on the public domain, right? Mm, yeah. But a personal even. Yeah. Now, whenever they submit, you know, on, on the you know, the aim scope of the journal, the blind review, when you are clicking it, it is on your part to do that ethics that you have not contacted the effort. Mm -hmm. We haven't, right? But, but if that author is reported, then he will have yeah. a problem. But, uh, I mean, I would say, um, the notion of uh, of double blind reviewer, I think uh, most of that, most of the time, actually, this assumption, I mean, I'm not sure it holds. Uh, I wouldn't say that most of the time it doesn't hold, but uh, a lot of time it doesn't. Because what happens if you, especially if you go to the top journals, right? So what what you want to do is basically first you have a long time for developing of paper, and this paper would be around, so it would be presented at research seminars, would be presented at conferences multiple times before before it comes to the journal. And if the author is Im embedded in community, basically a lot of people will know who the author's, author of the paper is because they've seen it before in previous, uh, previous incarnations of the paper. So when they, when they get it in the, um, in the, in the journal, they would, uh, they would probably know who the author is, right? So, so it's, uh, I think this kind of, uh, this kind of uh, double uh, peer and uh, blind, blind review is often, often the assumption it, it doesn't hold. So I'm not sure, and I, frankly, I'm not sure if it's, uh, if it's, if it's necessary, right? So some, some researchers are actually calling for, let's say, post-publication review, right? That you would have public reviews attached with the with the article, right? So, so, and I, I'm not sure if this is uh, this is wrong because, uh, um, I mean, peer peer review system is supposed to ensure quality and ensure soundness uh, of research, um, but I'm not totally sure it's. Um, it's fit for the purpose, right? Uh, even the reviewers don't really have much time to, to review. Usually they read the paper in one hour or two hours and then put their comments. So, so I'm not sure they're able to ensure uh, that everything that, uh, that could be, uh, could went wrong in the article would be, would be corrected. That's one thing. Um, another thing is that often this game starts to be about the theoretical contribution. And it starts to be about uh, changing some things in the paper that uh, are not sure need, to, need changing, right? So, so reviewers have to show that they did something and they, they want to request, especially up top journals, they want to make it an, uh, an exclusive process, they want to make it uh, difficult to publish because they, they receive a lot of uh, um, a lot of submissions and, um, and they have to weed out and then, um, and then it becomes a, a kind of a game, right, between the reviewer and the journal and the author uh, that you have to satisfy a certain line of thinking, right, uh, of the reviewers. And, um, and I'm not sure that's, uh, that's so objective anymore. So, okay, I'm, I'm now rambling <laughs> a little bit, but, uh, but I think uh, um, there, there's a lot of things that uh, about the peer review process that are that are maybe not not too good. Right? Actually, you know, with, with the internet, so the blind review was 50, 15 years back. Mm -hmm. Any any paper which you get, the title is there. You could do a Google search. All likelihood, the paper has a copy, it's just not even something. 
That's true. Mm. That's true. Often, often, yeah, often you can. Uh, that's uh, that's an important. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, the, the post publication review would be that, uh, that then you just attach reviews, uh, you publish the paper, then then people can comment, right? So I mean, they can comment the, the the review publication, or, or maybe you can have even the official post publication review that the uh, reviewers would also be signed with their names and uh, and up. So. So there, there's a lot of ideas how how to change the system, but uh, I'm not sure I'm not sure the system is getting changed. <laughs> so, um, so I mean another thing is here uh, is the publishers, right? So that's uh, that's another big thing about economic publishing that uh, uh, is um, is let's say problematic, right? So uh, um, researchers send their work there for for free. Reviewers work for free. Editors mostly work for free, uh, and then public uh, publishers sell us our work back for for expensive money, right? So that's a, that's a that's a yeah, that's a that's a very good business model. I, I often say I often say that. Oh yeah, that's. A, that kind of uh, open access publishing fees are then uh, yeah crazy. So so basically, I often say that uh, there's uh, there's three three great uh, uh, businesses in the world, right? Arms, drugs, and academic publishing. Right? This is uh, <laughs> the best business models that you, you can have, right? Uh, so I'm not sure which one of those is most profitable, but uh, <laughs> I think uh, academic publishing is uh, is right there. Um, so um, I'll go a little bit through uh, factors that make uh, the article uh, more cited. Right. So there's there's been a considerable amount of research on this uh, on this topic. Uh, so here's one from uh, recent from Huang, 2019, uh, and they did the research on uh, what causes the uh, business management uh, business management education articles to be cited. Right. And the, one, the four factors they found that was most closely correlated uh, with citations, and uh, I think here we have to be especially careful that uh, correlation is not causation. Right? There is a lot of uh, feedback loops in these things, and uh, later on I'll present results of some literature review of the um, of the more of the articles. Uh, more of the factors uh, than this, and sometimes it's really difficult to uh, to decipher whether whether these kind of factors are causing citations or they're just correlated, and uh, and some other factors is co is causing both. Right. So so here is uh, um, so these authors find four four basic factors that are really influencing uh, um, the number of references. So the more references a paper has, the more likely it is to get cited. Uh, the scholarly profile of the author. So, are they embedded in the community? Um, are they are they have they published on the on the topic and so on? Uh, do they have previous citations? Um, uh, what is the affiliation prestige of the author's institution? So that was uh, uh, that was quite a strong uh, uh, strongly correlated. And what is the journal H index, right? So uh, so what is the let's say reputation of the journal in the in the citation state? So previous citations to the uh, to the journal, right? So this kind of this kind of four factors uh, they found. Um, also, also maybe the, uh, the trendiness of the topic. Um, yeah, absolutely, um, absolutely. All right. Uh, I'll, uh, so these, these authors haven't found that, but uh, I think in the next couple of, uh, of slides we'll we'll get to that as well. Right. Um, so here's uh, 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 the Hamtan uh, and uh, and colleagues. Uh, they they try to to put together the factors that are affecting the number of citations into into three uh, general categories. So one are paper related factors. Journal-related factors and author-related factors, and there is often a saying that 20% uh, of the papers receive 
80% of, uh, of the citations. So there's a so-called Pareto principle at work uh, here, uh, here as well. So uh, a bit of a uh, winner-take-all logic, right? And we'll, we'll, see, we'll see later, I have one graph that is pretty uh, pointing in this, uh, uh, in this direction. So uh, what they did was they, they, they went through a literature review and they identified 28 factors that are influencing the number of, uh, uh, of citations. So we can look at, the, uh, we can look at those. Uh, so first, our first category is paper-related uh, factors. Um, and one is uh, the quality of paper, which is, uh, which is a kind of a, let's say, it's not very objective thing to, uh, to, to analyze, and it's, uh, um, it's difficult to quantify. Right? So, so the, a number of studies have found that the quality of paper um, is correlated to the number of citations, but uh, how can we judge quality? Right? So what is, uh, uh, what is a quality paper? Uh, and uh, the different studies often assessed uh, what is a quality paper in a different way, right? So um, they used maybe raters to, to rate papers and, and, and see, and then, then this was a measure of, uh, of quality. Right. Uh, they maybe rated the papers on different uh, different aspects, like uh, was it novel? Uh, what is the clarity of the presentation? What is the reliability of the paper? Uh, are the methods sound um, and so on? Um, and uh, and usually it's also that peer-reviewed papers have uh, um, have higher quality than uh, than not peer-reviewed. Uh, so so I mean this is kind of obvious in a sense, right? M m papers that are better, that, ha that have more quality, are, are also more, uh, more cited. Um, the second one is uh, what, uh, what Jones was talking about, right? trending, right? So if, 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 what is the popularity and interest in the, in the subject, right? So the, the, if the topic is hot, then, uh, um, then this would make the paper more cited, right? Which means, that uh, you have to also pick the right moment, right? So sometimes a topic can be hot maybe for a year, for a two, or, but not more, right? But um, there are some trends that are more longer term, and I think if you, if you manage to publish at the beginning of that trend, then that would, uh, that would get you quite a lot of citations, right? But uh, I think I was mentioning this a little bit in the, um, in the Lumiere uh, session, that uh, there's a, there's also, there's trends and there's management facts. So there's a lot of, uh, and uh, those of you who, who have been in the business for, for longer, you'll see that some topics come, they trend for a year, two, maybe a couple of years, and then they fade away, right? And, uh, and, this, and this happens, but uh, so with this kind of topics, you have to be really quick to publish and then maybe you get citations, but they will fade away. Some of the topics, they start and they build, 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 and they will go. If you, if you, if you are in the beginning of that trend, then you will um, you'll be riding basically the wave, right? But how to identify which, uh, which topic will be trending and which is just a fad, it's, uh, I think it's, uh, it's difficult. Right? Um, so especially um, um, for, for the PhD students, that's, uh, that's more important because uh, they need to, they need, it will take a while for them to finish and everything, and they need, to, they need to make sure that the topic will be relevant even, uh, even uh, uh, after they finish. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, one thing about the, um, also that, uh, that Chen 2012 found that uh, uh, papers that uh, introduce novel connections between different uh, strands, uh, streams of literature, right? So the, that this kind of papers that uh, put together um, literatures that haven't been before, and the, then they incite interest in this kind of literatures are um, are more cited. Um, The next uh, factor is uh, characteristics uh, of fields or subfields of a, of a discipline. So this is, um, this is maybe not so, so important uh, uh, here, but the different, different subfields has different uh, citation profiles. Uh, that would be especially if you look at the different disciplines. Right? So if you look at, I don't know, computer science, chemistry, management, uh, other social sciences, they would be very different in the way how they're cited. 
Also, I know, for example, computer science papers would usually be very short, very technical, right? So they would have fewer citations than, than typical management paper, which is more like 40 pages uh, of, uh, of text. Right? So, so they would be published much more quickly, but they would also fade, uh, fade much more quickly. So the five years ago would be, would be ancient science uh, uh, in this age. Uh, but um, in, uh, in other disciplines, uh, it, um, it's different, right? So computer science, chemistry, management, they all have different characteristics. And within management, you'd have different, uh, different uh, I don't know, finance would be different than, um, I don't know, human resources, than tourism, than, uh, um, than other, other subfields. Right? So, so one thing here the, is that the bigger, that more, more papers that are published in the research field, um, the more chances that it will get citations. So if you publish in a small niche, then, uh, then that paper could have a lot of influence on that niche. Right? But uh, all, and altogether, if we put the quantitative aspect of it, uh, would not show so much, uh, uh, so much citations. Right? Even, even though it could be important and very influential paper, the technical quality have more, uh, more citations. So I think that's also a good, uh, good way to, um, to be published in general, right? So to, to make sure that the methods are, are robust, to make sure that they are really well described, that they are, they are described in a um, in very clear way. Um, uh, and uh, um, here, one thing that, uh, that they are mentioning here is uh, uh, the, the name of the statistical softwares, which uh, I think Autos very rarely actually mentioned. So I, I remember when I was doing the, the methodological review of bibliometrics that uh, there, were, there were actually very, very few, um, a few articles that actually mentioned which software they used. I mean, sometimes it would be obvious from, from the pictures, but, uh, but you wouldn't know um, because authors, uh, authors didn't tell it. So then um, some methods make the article more cited. For example, uh, um, randomized controlled trials are usually a little bit more difficult. Uh, they, they are difficult to do, but, uh, but if, you can publish, uh, if, if you can put together this kind of research design, it would make the article more cited. Um, and it's um, also the document type. Right? So one thing that is here is that a review papers uh, are much more cited than, um, than empirical research papers. So uh, review papers, are, um, I think they're kind of in vogue for, for the last couple of years. I think this is what every journal has now, um, has now figured out, that, uh, that the re review papers are much more cited, and every journal is in the game of improving their impact factor. So, so basically, a lot of journals started publishing reviews that didn't publish them before, right? which means that uh, um, they also get a lot of reviews submitted. And uh, every PhD student will do a literature review in their study. They will try to publish it. And often, authors consider reviews as a low-hanging fruit in a way, which is, uh, which is true and it's not true. right? So reviews are, I think they are cited. They can be very good for you. Um, um, but they're, I think they're very difficult to publish. And they're, they're very difficult to do well. So, so you have to follow the, the exact uh, uh, strict methodology about selecting paper, about analyzing. Um, and there's actually, there, now there's a, there's a whole review literature on uh, how, uh, how to do reviews. Right? So you, in, the, in the recent years, you've got tons of this research uh, published but with advice of how, how to do reviews. I think organizational research methods, they even had a special issue on, on, uh, on how to do reviews. So I think that's uh, all um, as, in part of, uh, as part of the game. Right? So there are journals trying to, um, to influence, uh, improve their, their impact factors. Uh, they're, they're accepting reviews because they're more cited, more people sending reviews. But uh, it's difficult to do a quality review. And uh, reviews that are of low quality are, are not, uh, uh, have not been found to be more, more cited. Right? So uh, doing a reviews has great rewards, but it's also, it all, it is, it's, it's tedious, it is a lot of work, and it requires to, to really make some kind of contribution, right? So it's not enough to just, uh, um, to just superficially. 
uh, review the literature, but you have to derive some kind of uh, directions for the future. Right? So all the reviews should be future oriented, not backwards oriented. Right? So if you um, you have to synthesize the literature and you have to put some something together, something uh, something forward for for those that will be citing. Right? So and then then people can go, oh, this review recommended the, what we're doing, and then they, then they will cite the review, and this happens quite often. Uh -huh. Not just of different topics, but of the journals of. Yeah, no. They, they often, especially, use uh, bibliometrics for this kind of sense. So there is, yeah, there's been quite a lot of uh, of this published. I think it's actually interesting for for a journal, and um, if you manage to. Um, I think with this kind of things, it's uh, it's always good to, to write to editor, right? Because if you do something like this, you cannot publish it anywhere else. So so you have to, to have a reasonable chance that it will get published. But I think for readers uh, of those journal and for for the editors, it's actually very interesting, right? So um, so so this this happens quite often, and I, I think it's also a good way to, to get a to get a good publication. But it's important to get the editors. In principle approval. Yes, some kind of uh, at least tacit approval that because uh, because otherwise what, what will you do with that? I mean, if you do uh, um, uh, this kind of uh, analysis of Journal of Business Research, you cannot uh, send it to I don't know Journal of Management or whatever. So so you have to, to be in the contact with editors. I have uh, the first question is coming from this the, the tenure. So if you're doing a longitudinal review, how much the time will it be? Uh -huh. So tenure, how much would that be for a review paper? That's one. So, so what kind of uh, interval? Oh, how yeah, long di years, difficult. Years, years. What, what would have the right kind of traction? Mm -hmm. um, let me think. From from what I see, mostly they do they do reasonably long. So it's not uh, it's not three or five years. Or, but I'd say at least since the last major major review on the topic. But uh, what I see that uh, the reviews are actually becoming much more specialized in the, in the narrower and narrower topics, right? Before you had, I don't know, you had the review on, the, on women entrepreneurship, but now you'd have on, I don't know, winner, women entrepreneurship and I don't know, so in, a, um, in developed countries or women entrepreneurship or some other niche topic, right? So the, the topics would get much more narrower than they, uh, than they were. So the broad reviews that they were published five, ten years ago, they would they would not be published anymore, right? So often you wouldn't have uh, a previous uh, a previous review. But I don't think there's a specific uh, specific time frame that uh, that you would uh, look for, or at least I don't know it uh, if it does exist. Yeah. And also in a review paper, when you're writing the introduction, mm -hmm. when you're doing the research paper, you know what you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what should, how, what direction should the introduction go? I mean, uh, actually, I I don't think you would uh, you would write an introduction to the review paper much differently for as uh, as for uh, for empirical paper. I mean, you still have to have some kind of uh, let's say general topic that you're talking about. You have to have a specific uh, focus on the literature. So what are the questions in literature? You have to state your, your research questions, what those are, what are the methods that you used. And uh, this would be most, you would reference the previous, the let's say, um, the literature that gives you advice, how to do structure, uh, structured literature review. And some journals would have specific requests about which kind of literature, uh, which kind of methodologies they're, they're accepting. Um, and then you'd, uh, you'd write your contribution. So I think it's be, the introduction would be very similar to, uh, to empirical article in principle, just that uh, you'd have different research questions, different methods, and, and so on. So. Um, all right, so we're still at paper-related factors. Uh, so we're talking about document type. Uh, we can talk about study type. So again, uh, randomized trials. Uh, these are, there's lots of RCTs done in medicine. 
in, um, in management and economics are still, uh, still pretty rare. They're, they're very difficult to do. So most of the research that we have in, um, in management would be observational research. Um, also, another thing is that uh, meta-analysis. DID also now the new thing. Sorry? That DID should be the new thing. I mean, after RCT, the different should be the new thing, right? Um, I'm not sure I understand. Uh, uh, the the difference in difference better, the RCT. Uh -huh. I, I think probably last year, the DID will be the new thing. Uh, I'll see, maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah because, because the last global was on that. Mm -hmm. uh, All right, could be. Could be. The DID is easier to do for management. RCT is. is mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. It, is. It, it takes a lot of work and a lot of a lot of funds. It's actually expensive. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a yeah. It's a it's a golden star in medicine, but in management is also very difficult because you don't have so clear effect and yeah. But um, I mean, economists uh, are starting to be also fond of RCTs, but. And the meta-analysis, right? So meta-analysis are um, basically the methodology to figure out uh, whether, whether there is an effect between the two variables. Um, and you can, you can pull different studies that have, uh, that have studied the same, uh, the same connection between two different, uh, different variables. And meta-analysis are, um, are also uh, very cited. As, uh, as reviews, they're, they're pretty tedious and, and difficult to do, but if you can do a good meta-analysis study, it's uh, almost guaranteed that it will get, uh, it will get cited, uh, cited quite a lot. Um, then we have uh, characteristics of uh, results, discussions, and other sections. Um, I think this is a, a little bit getting similar than the quality of the paper, so how, how are those, uh, those sections written? Um, also, uh, it has been found that uh, if, you if you try to slice the results too much, so if you have the same data and you publish multiple papers from that data, that would usually mean that uh, each of those papers would not be cited as much uh, as possible, right? So, so this w is one thing to be, um, to be careful about. Uh, there is also a policy discussion. So, so if there is a if there is a strong connections to policy or strong uh, strong policy recommendations, that would usually mean that uh, uh, would be associated with higher numbers of citations. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, if we are referring to a charging infrastructure of electric vehicles technology, we are not able to find so much papers on citations are so much found there. Mm -hmm. So in that case, uh, when we are asked to uh, review a paper and have to refer a uh, well-cited journal, mm -hmm. so that in that case, well citations, what does it define? How much citations are required for reviewing a particular paper? I think it's, that's difficult to judge, but I, I, I think uh, mm, as far as I know, most would be would use uh, journal journal impact factor or this kind of things as a proxy for the citations of a paper, right? So I see some papers that would uh, I don't know that would cite only ABS three star and base four star journals, nothing else, right? So. And, uh, and this is sometimes, uh, uh, sometimes that you have to be careful, especially if you go into higher ranks journals, that, uh, that some of the reviewers would not like if you, sent, if you cite lower ranked journals as much, right? I mean, a couple of citations are right, but I think they would want most of the citations to be from the higher ranked journals. But if you're writing about some kind of niche topic, that would be pretty much uh, very difficult to do, right? So, I think recent would be, let's say, up to five years. Right? So I think the general, the general advice that I've heard that, let's say, two-thirds of the citations should be from the last five years, something like this. 
Um, not, I mean, not always doable, but uh, but it's not it's not a strict limit, right? And sometimes you'll see you'll have a problem uh, with a paper that uh, I don't know you had it in a drawer for very long. Very long. I have a couple of those. So uh, so if you if you would put it out of the drawers, and then all of the citations would be from older than five years, right? So you have to find newer newer citations to include into into the paper then. So, we're still at paper-related factors. Um, some of the things that they found is also the use of figures and appendix in papers. Um, now, all of these effects um, depends how strong they are, right? So, but some studies have found that uh, if you use uh, um, um, well-drawn figures, um, how many images you use, uh, if there's an appendix there, it would be seem to be uh, increase the frequency of citations. Um, then you have uh, the characteristic of the title, abstract and keywords. So what is the, um, I think good title is actually very important. Right? So I would, I would tend to write very uh, short, simple titles. Uh, a lot of authors would try to write uh, catchy titles. So they would try to use, I don't know, question marks in the title or some kind of uh, clever phrases and this sort of stuff. So there's a, different people would have different, uh, different approaches. Um, I don't know, I tend, to, I tend to go very, very simple and, uh, and very general. Um, um, so I don't know, for example, uh, in uh, the bibliometric paper, so we did just the bibliometric methods in management and organization. Right? So very simple and very, you, it's very clear what is, uh, what is it. And it's also very, very um, uh, friendly to search engines. Right? So if you, if you can write something that's very friendly to search engines, I think that would also help, um, help to, uh, to increase, this, uh, increase the citations. Um, and that, that, that does, that's not just for scientific papers. Also, also if, you, if you write uh, papers for practice. I, know, I, I wrote an uh, article on, on LinkedIn about Uber and Uber's competitive advantage. So the title was simple, what is Uber's competitive advantage? And, uh, and still, if you, if you type in Uber and competitive advantage, you'll get, uh, you'll get a link in among the top, uh, uh, top findings of, uh, of that paper. Right? So then, then the students uh, that uh, they were ha having to write seminar papers on, on Uber, they would, they would find my article uh, there. Right? So, so this kind of uh, search friendliness could also, could also help. Um, so this is the typo. Um, diversity in number of keywords also matters. Uh, what is the characteristics of references? So this is what we were talking about earlier a little bit. So more references usually mean more citations. Uh, the prestige of the references, what is the variety, um, and so on. Um, and then there's the so-called age effect of uh, the cited papers, right? So normally, the older paper is, it, uh, it had more time to be cited, so older papers would be more cited than newer. But typically what it happens, um, it starts slowly, it reaches a peak after, after two, three years, and then, and then it dies down. So um, very rare are the papers that this, uh, this increases, uh, increases over time, right? Um, now, um, if you write, uh, uh, a, a paper on a certain topic, I, I, I've seen the effect that when authors would be then be maybe um, an editors for a special issue on the topic, then uh, this would uh, this would uh, uh, influence other authors to start citing the papers on that topic from the authors who are editors of the special issue. So, for example, this kind of editorships on a specific topic that you're uh, you're an expert that you're in the community. Could also help uh, um, help the citations. Any, any special tips for abstract writing? Um, because I think most uh, research papers are written in abstract, and abstract writing is the most important call, right? They read the abstract and decide whether they want yeah. to the paper. Yeah, I think the abstract should have the 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 punch point, right? I think uh, I think you, uh, the abstract. If you read the abstract, you, you should know what are the results of the paper. So what, what are we trying to tell the reader? 
And so this is, I think this is something uh, um, that, uh, that researchers often do. They say, we did this, and then we do some, um, uh, we contribute to this literature, and then uh, we, we have found some directions for future research. But they don't say what exactly this is. And so I think try to be very specific, uh, very short, and very clear in the, in the abstract. Um, and uh, don't, uh, don't, uh, don't write it as a mystery paper, so just uh, put your punch point, uh, uh, punch line in the, in the abstract. Uh, so this is what I think. Make it as factual as possible. Yeah, as factual and as consequential. So what, what, are your, what are your findings? What are your contributions? I mean, if you have some specific uh, um, recommendations, the main recommendations for the future research, you could put it there. So as much information as possible. So don't, don't write it as a, I don't know, as a, um, as a table of contents for a paper, or don't, don't write it very, very vaguely, right? So try to be specific uh, and very succinct and, and clear. I think this is, uh, this is the good thing about abstracts. Um, all right, so as we said, the citations usually go up, they reach a peak after a couple of years, and then they, they die, die off either quickly or slowly, depends, uh, depends on the paper. Uh, but uh, very rarely is the paper rediscovered in, um, um, in later years. Right? So if, uh, usually it's, uh, it, it dies off. It's just so much new production and uh, so much new papers being published, and there's increasing number of papers being published. So as, uh, as you well know, everybody, all of us are under pressure to publish. Uh, the rankings are dependent on it. Uh, the institutions are dependent on it. So lots of researchers publishing lot, lots of papers. And then the, the older contribution is uh, there is no, people don't go back to, to it, right? So un unless it's some, some kind of big contribution, and then it might become a, let's say, self-fulfilling prophecy. If, so if a paper gets established and cited, then it would be just like a snowball. It would get more and more and more, uh, more citations. But th those papers are, are relatively, uh, relatively rare, right? So um, I think my paper on, on the bibliometric methods uh, a lot of people have picked up when they're doing bibliometrics, so the, the citations are still increasing. So they're, um, they're still, they will probably level off at some point, but, the, but at this point, I think the paper was published in 2015, um, and it was around in the conference before, um, and I, I put it on the ResearchGate also before, so before the publication, so people started downloading it, download, download, downloading it before. Um, so, so this is this is one thing uh, how um, how also journals uh, try to increase their impact factors. So what they do is uh, they um, they publish early version of a paper, and then the 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 real uh, let's say published version will be only two or three years after after that. So so the, it would get the time for uh, for people to cite the paper, right? So when the, this and the, what impact factors are taking into account? They're taking account, so let's say impact factor, act factor for 2022 would take papers published in 2021 and 2020 uh, and how many times each paper was published. So this is basically the definition of impact factor. So, so if, you, if, that pub, if that paper that has the year of publication 2021 was actually published at 2018, for example, Right, so so they would they would get counted for impact factor when they're at peak of the so they would get some time to get cited, right? It would not be the first year because the first year, it's a not many papers would get cited in the first year because uh, it takes time. First, uh, someone has to find your paper, uh, they have to write their paper, they have it takes time to publish it. So before before this kind of citations come into journal, it will it will take time. So it's not be, it's not a, uh, it's a slow process. Right? So so it will take a couple of years for for the journals to uh, start being cited. Uh, so some of these suggestions are based on what are the paper related factors which lead to higher citation. Mm -hmm. But as an author, what can I do once the paper is published so that citation? Any mm -hmm. strategies that I could. How do I do that? Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, that's, a, that's something, actually, that's one of the tasks that I'll have you for, for the group work later. <laughs> but um, 
what I would say, I mean, one thing is uh, one thing is social media. So, so a lot of journalists right now have uh, uh, have ways that you can write a, you can uh, you can film a video explanation of a paper. So that's something you could do. Um, the other thing takes a little bit more long term. So building your uh, building your profile on uh, I don't know Twitter or LinkedIn. Uh, so having the connections and then then promoting that paper in a in a simple succinct way uh, also maybe about its connections to the practice and, and so on uh, so I'd say this, this would be the main uh, the main things after after it is published also some people now there's uh, some people go to more great lengths that I'm not sure whether they're still okay or not so uh, sending emails to, to other people. I mean, it's okay if if you know um, if you know the person and if if you know they're interested in the topic. It doesn't hurt if you send them uh, uh, if you send them paper by email. Some would get uh, some would do uh, some would tag specific people on LinkedIn or something. This is this is more of a shady shady way to go about. It. I mean, it's not it's not wrong, but uh, you have to be careful not to get a backlash from it. So so it's a little bit of a um, a fine line between promoting and. Uh, so any of these strategies don't actually violate our copyright agreement with the journal, right? So if I uh, represent my journal findings in the form of a video explanation, or I just tag it on LinkedIn or Twitter. Oh, uh, um, I think it depends. If you you don't you can you cannot put uh, the the final version of a paper edited and uh, and uh, uh, formatted uh, on Twitter. Uh, but that reminded me of the most important strategy that I, I forgot to mention, which is uh, publish it in, uh, in archives, uh, in uh, open access archives. This is, this is the first thing you should do immediately when the paper is accepted. So um, if you haven't done it before, I, I know for my bibliometric paper, I had it on, on the research gate before it was published. Now, I'm not so sure. Uh, I mean, some journals are okay with it. Uh, some journals uh, say that uh, that they're not uh, they're not okay with it. So it's a bit uh, a bit of a fine line because some some journals consider this as a pre-publication. So I'm not doing it anymore. But uh, but actually I don't know. I find I find economists doing it this a lot. So what economists do is basically, uh, especially at the top level. They would uh, they would present the paper of conferences, their research seminar. So by the time of uh, of the um, uh, the paper is actually published in a journal, it would be cited like 100 times because everybody knows about it. It would be on the on ResearchGate, on uh, on the other open access uh, portals, and so on. Um, in management, this is not used so much, uh, but uh, I'd. I take a look if journals are allowing this kind of things. Some of them would request that you uh, you put it down. So if you have it somewhere open access, that you put down, and that you I think the the most common request is that you don't publish the the final version. That you can have the the version that you sent to the journal, but not not the final accepted version. But then in the UK anyway, now now the, the the funding bodies require you to to have open access for all all research that is funded by by public money. It needs to be open access uh, immediately upon publication. So universities, some of them have some budget for open access to pay to journals. Uh, otherwise, you could do the final version to the um, no. I think from April actually they're requiring the the final version. So the, with the reviewer comments and everything uh, uh, in the article, to be published open access uh, in the um, in the university website or somewhere or or in the in the journal. So right now, when you're you're supposed to when you're submitting the article, you're supposed in the in the letter to the editors, you have to say that uh, you intend to do that and that uh, that should be uh, in the in the agreement because usually publish. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Because usually, usually the journals would not allow you to do that, right? So the, that's, uh, and I, I think this is something that uh, that is still not uh, totally, uh, totally figured out. So we'll see. Because this is a pretty new policy from the UK. So uh, the HBR journal, yeah. magazine, yeah, that has a lot of uh, research articles which have been simplified, paraphrased, yeah. and yeah. published. Right? That's yeah. for the common. Yeah. 
Yes. So is that allowed normally? I mean, from publisher's end? Yeah, I mean, as long as you don't use too much of the origin, original text, I think that's uh, that's not a problem. So, so you, you you cannot really use the same words, the same sentences, but as long uh, so if for you. For example, if I have a research article which has been published and I write uh, a popular press article yeah. for the business press. No problem. No problem. No problem. No problem. Yeah. I think this is. Course, I think this is. A, yeah, that would help help the citations would, as well. Um, because then they would have to find the paper. Then you know, I don't know. So you can refer it to your article. You can refer. Yeah, you can. Uh, yeah, you can self-cite basically. But uh, but no, uh, actually, this would uh, this would probably help uh, help citations. I mean, I know I I found a couple of articles that way. Because I read uh, in the HBR an article and I saw this is based on some uh, some research and I went to find it, so I'd say I'd say this is I mean, it's it's totally right and it, it might help as well. Um, Can you upload abstracts? Can you upload abstracts? Abstracts? Uh, where? Oh yeah, I mean I will, I would uh, upload the full paper. Maybe not the final accept version, but uh, at least those that you sent before the reviewers comments. So, but um, although, um, to be frank, uh, we 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 upload the la the last version. So, so the the, the journalists um, turn off the camera, <laughs> but <laughs> so so the publisher shouldn't watch that. But uh, I mean, I usually just uh, just publish the last uh, the last version. So it's not formatted in the journal uh, with the journal headings and everything. But I just put the 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 final version on the research gate and. I think that helps quite a lot because you can see. I mean, the downloads also mean that the, the article will be cited, and if uh, people discover on uh, on ResearchGate, I think that's a, that's a good way to get uh, to get cited. And not everybody has access to the journals, right? So so it will give access to people who um, who are not subscribed to the journals. So I think this kind of open open uh, um, archives are are always good. So. Um, I use ResearchGate, but there is also a social science research network that has a lot of papers. Academia, uh, Academia Edu, yeah, yeah. So there's uh, what else? Um, Archive, which is mostly for technical sciences. Um, I think there's SOC, SOTS Archive as well. Uh, so there, there's quite a quite a number, right? So. As I said, I usually use use ResearchGate, and this uh, this it's works. Kind of the fast yeah, yeah, it is. It is. Probably, yeah, minor. yeah. I think academia is much more uh, yeah. closed uh, somehow. I don't know. I think more yeah. academia.edu. Yeah. Yeah. Is it actually ResearchGate you can just upload your paper? Hmm? Is it certain my urgent that's going to go with the very basic level of it? Submit the paper and used to allow you to upload after two days. Uh -huh. It's a very basic level. Mm -hmm. No, usually what happens is if you list the abstract and the reference and not the paper, I receive queries that can you share it with me individually? Yes, yes. Which mm -hmm. I do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I've never shared because I'm always uh, wondering whether the publishers will allow it. No, or because not. I've not listed them. I've not listed them. Sorry? Uh, uh, suppose a paper written by an author, yeah. can you uh, give it personally to... Or what? To, oh yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. You can? Yeah, I mean, people do it. I mean, but technically... As long as you don't put it on an electronic screen. Yeah, yeah. If, you, if you don't put it... You, I, you don't put it on online that everybody can access it. But I mean, I'm sending people to uh, um, by email. I also sometimes put Dropbox folders and give a couple of papers for research seminars and this sort of thing. So uh, I'm not sure this is totally okay for, for with the with the agreements. Any trouble is send the image and send the JPEG. JPEG. Electronic file PDF though. Yeah, but it's uh, I think that's too much trouble. I'd say just if if you're concerned about that, then just send the unformatted version that you basically the word that you send to the journal. Mm -hmm. And it's getting published. If you like, uh, it's going to send the paper to me. I will yeah. 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 So I don't think it's 
Yeah, that's a, that's a good way. Yeah. I agree. That will also come out of this Yeah. Especially I if you're embedded in I the don't think I, I, I don't think that goes a long way in decades or whatever. Mm. Like, you should put it for what? Because you can say how it's like. Sorry, anything there are websites on Amazon where you can download almost all things. All what you can do. Oh, yeah. Oh, the SIGHUB. The SIGHUB. I remember there, were, there was a time, uh, I don't know, when I was still at PhD, actually. I mean, we had good access to the journals. But at that time, it was just so much simpler to just go on C-Hub and just download. The, even, even though I had access and everything, but I would have to figure out in which journal it was. Then I'd have to go there and click uh, five links before I, I get the download PDF. Um, I would go to C-Hub and just download it, and uh, it, was, it was so quick. So this was a, I'd say, great service. I'm not sure publishers would agree, but um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, as I said. Um, all right, so let's uh, uh, let's continue. Uh, so we we are talking about age effect, um, about the peak, and then um, then becomes obsolete, right? So so yeah, research. And as we were talking earlier, most of the uh, newer papers would cite recent research, right? So after a couple of years, that would that kind of information would become um, uh, become obsolete. Yeah. You have a Ah. Mm. Yeah. I mean that's a that's a question. I mean you How have to No, no, you you have to you have to use it. otherwise it's uh, it's pro it, c it can become a problem. So you have to paraphrase uh, and I think in the newer versions of Turnitin, actually they're very, they, they still report plagiarism even if, even if you just change a couple of words and, uh, and yeah. this sort of stuff. So I see that a lot, uh, especially in student essays. So, uh, so I'd say you, you need to paraphrase, although I have to say uh, um, if authors took great care of saying exactly what they want to say, and then you need to paraphrase that. You want to say exactly the same thing, and you have to paraphrase it in a certain way. I'm not sure how. What's the point of all that? Um, but um, but you you need to you need to paraphrase it. Otherwise, or if you use the exact words, put it in uh, put in brackets, uh, in parentheses. But uh, you can't uh, you cannot overdo it, right? So otherwise, the paper becomes unreadable. Yeah. Yeah. Financial inclusion has seven points of definition. So that is a good 250, 300 words. Yeah. No. They don't want to change the definition. So you put quote unquote at the end. Yeah, they they do. Uh, I've had a, I've had a couple of cases like that in. Uh, when you change the definition, the better for you. Mm. So yeah. They will be good to get this. I agree. This is our. Yeah, I'm not sure I have an answer for, for no, this issue. There are AI software which help you to paraphrase. Ah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, students are doing it themselves. Students are now using some software mm -hmm. so that you take the same text, yeah. you spin it in five different ways, five people have different reports. Yeah, students have all kinds of. Yeah. Uh,
All right. Uh, so let's see. Oh, when will we, we plan to make we a break? Plan, uh, 11. 11. OK, so we have 10 more minutes to, yeah, I think we'll just about finish um, the, the citation part. So, yes? Yeah. Different focus. So, what what are some of the popular uh, you know uh, types of review papers that are good to uh, write and suggested? Um, I mean, I think the most the most popular are the, the basic structured literature review, right? So where you have uh, you have the the process. I think uh, I'm not. I don't remember the exact citations, but I can uh, I can look. I have a, a number of these uh, uh, these papers who advise you how to do exact literature review, right? Um, out of my head, I don't remember the authors right now. But there's a uh, I think you you need to pick up the methodology and follow it. So which is usually very very strict to just uh, try to uh, weed out the the bias of the researcher and everything and to do it in a, in an objective way. So as long. As long as you find the methodology um, and you follow it, um, uh, you'll be fine. But uh, I, if you if you uh, if you do a certain different kinds of re review, like I don't know, problematizing review review or something like, let's say that's not so mainstream, make sure that there are some reviews published in the journal before that. Right. So otherwise, if you do some relatively straightforward structural literature review, you'll be fine everywhere, as long as you follow the, the methodology that you, you can find in a paper. So, so find a good paper on the, with the methodology and follow it and, uh, and make it structured and make it, uh, I think with this, uh, with this kind of papers is also um, important to describe your process very well. I think if you, with describing your process, you're basically signaling to reviewers that uh, that you did everything as uh, as robustly and thoroughly as you did, right? Don't write just I know one or two paragraphs. Oh, we reviewed this literature, so many papers. But be very precise what you did, how you selected the papers, how you analyzed them, um, and so on. Right? So so this is I think the way to uh, to do it. But I uh, I think the most important thing with reviews is that uh, future research directions, reviews future research directions. So reviews are not backward looking, but forward. So you need to, uh, you need to, have, to have a reason. Uh, you need to have some kind of end result to justify that review, right? And this kind of end result would be uh, directions for future research. So, so this kind of things uh, you need to put out in the, in the review, right? So I think reviews are, that's, that's why difficult, uh, reviews are difficult to write, because you have to synthesize you have to figure out what exactly the, the, the literature is saying and where, where is it all leading. And this is, this is really very difficult to do. So in the old days, uh, only, only uh, seasoned uh, older researchers, professors could, uh, could do that. Nowadays, uh, um, that's, not, uh, uh, that's not so strict anymore. Um, even though in some of the review journals like uh, uh, Academy of Management Annals, uh, you'd, get, you'd get in only if you were a well-known researchers on the topic. But in other journals, or journalism ma of management is similar, right? So Journal of Management has a yearly review re issue where you send a proposal, but, uh, but it's very difficult to get in. Uh, but other journals would be more, more forgiving. But I think find a, find a strict methodology and follow it and describe the methods really thoroughly and well. So that's Yeah. Where, uh, I've seen several authors, what they do is they summarize some existing papers, impactful papers in well-known journals, mm -hmm. and uh, they present a gist, a practitioner kind of a gist. So can we that, uh, do that for somebody else's paper, or we could do it for our own? Uh, um, I would say um, probably best not to do it just for one paper. But if you maybe draw your um, your uh, your data or your let's say 
what you write in that HBR article from several different papers, I think that would be okay. But just paraphrasing one paper, yeah. I'm not sure. I mean, I wouldn't call it explicitly wrong, but uh, um, but I think uh, I think it would be better to have uh, several journals to uh, to draw on. And uh, and HBR, if you we're talking about HBR specifically. Uh, they they only only publish invited articles, right? So it's uh, it's difficult to get in. Um, Unless you collaborate with some HBR faculty. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so there are some others who are a little bit easier to get in, I mean, but still difficult, like Californian Management Review and uh, MIT Management Review. Sloan. Uh, Sloan, yeah, Sloan Management. Um, uh, so, so that that would be, I think, uh, one, at least one of them is three-star classified, and uh, and both of them are very, very reputable. I think there's another one that has a lot of uh, uh, that's a bit easier to get in, but it has very, I think it's lot very practitioner-oriented. Uh, Business Horizons, if you're familiar with the journal. So, uh, Business Horizons has a lot of texts that are that are very practitioner-oriented. Even though they're written by academics, but they have, don't have so kind of strict structure like most of the scientific journals would have. Um, all right, so paper related for early citation and speed of citation. So uh, um, in the, you can see initial citations that it's kind of an early feedback of scientific community. And this is sometimes that uh, it's good if you put your paper on their search gate even before it's published. So they, people get a get chance to read it, they get a chance to cite it, and if it, if it gets cited right away, th then maybe it, uh, it builds a critical mass, more of the community sees it, and then uh, uh, early citations are usually predictive of, of later citations as well. Um, uh, I think I was talking about earlier that this is a little bit uh, of a not so clear subject. So some journals allow it, right? Some, some journals, uh, they want you to take down the paper when you submit it, right? So it's a, it's a little bit of an unclear situation right now, I think. I mean, I would, uh, in the recent years, I, I, didn't, uh, I didn't do it. Uh, before I was doing it, now I'm thinking actually to, to just publish my working papers before, before submitting it to journals. So, so it's a, it's a little bit of a unclear situation. Yeah. Also, Ivan, you just mentioned about working papers. Can you just tell, uh, tell us the difference between a, a formal research paper, which is published, will be a working paper? So, working paper can be a couple of ideas. No, a working paper is basically just an unpublished research paper. So that's uh, that's all. It's just a it's just a paper that hasn't been published officially in a journal. So it that's. Yeah, has not. Yeah. So this is this is just a working paper. This is uh, at least what I mean with uh, when I say about working paper. So it could be any research paper. So if, if you're anyways getting that working paper published, then it becomes a research paper. Yeah. Yeah. What that means is basically faculty can upload or researchers can upload their papers on the university's yeah. portal. Uh, uh, would there be any issues if we do something like that? Like in, in, in the institute itself, all of us can upload and it's hosted on the university website or institute website. Yeah. I mean, uh, pretty much. Um, all universities right now in the UK have these portals, and they require you to upload it if, because uh, um, in the UK they have a ref exercise uh, research excellence frameworks every five, six years. And articles that are not um, uploaded upon acceptance to the online portal would not count for that uh, exercise, right? So you wouldn't get, um, uh, every university gets a research ranking, so, so, so there is a precondition that the, only those um, articles that are published on, the, on those archives are, are counting. But I think it's the same rule as with, with ResearchGate or, or other, uh, other open access portals. About uh, publishers have their own copyright uh, agreements, uh, and, uh, and this, is, uh, this is kind of thing. So I, I would say 
you can upload the 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 your own formatted version so but not not the journal formatted version right? so the published so Yeah, I think some of the universities have uh, agreements with some kind of publishers that they're automatically um, can be open access. Um, all right. Um, well, sh shall we just finish this this slide and then then we we'll take a break? Okay. So, so this is about accessibility and visibility. And actually, we talked uh, throughout the, the 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 session. I think we 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 touched on most of those points, right? So, make it as as easily accessible as you can, right? So write a good title that is easily searchable, put it on open access so everybody can get it, um, and so on. Um, and uh, so self har have it, uh, and this kind of visibility is very predictive and leads to the, to the further, further citations, right? And, and if paper is downloaded, you can be almost sure that later it will get cited, right? Downloads are very good predictors of uh, um, of future citations. So if you see on the research gate that one of your papers is getting downloaded, uh, you can be sure that in, the, in a couple of, uh, in a year or two, it would get cited as well. Um, and also that goes the same for, for social media, right? So if you, um, if you tweet about the papers, if other people tweet about papers, if you, if you put it on LinkedIn, if you make it visible, you make it accessible to other researchers, that they know that you, you publish this, then it, it gives you better probability that the paper will get cited as well. I'll continue. Um, so we have a couple of factors that are not paper related to, to work through. Uh, most, of, most of the factors that influence citations uh, that I were mentioning were paper related, but there's uh, quite a couple of those that are journal or author related. Right? And the first one, of course, is the uh, journal impact factor and the prestige of the journal. Right? And often they say that even if it's a weaker paper that's published in a prestigious journal, may receive better citations, higher citations than a paper which is published in a minor journal. Right? So you would get, uh, you would get more visibility in a, in a more prestigious journal. It would also, for some of the top papers, they would, top, they would cite only papers that were published in top journals and so on. So, um, now, this is a, um, so the impact factor of the, of the journal is to s some matter predictive of the, um, of the citations, although you're not sure which way the, the causation here goes, right? So uh, is, this a, uh, is the paper, is the journal attracting better papers, which are, which are then better cited, or are the papers more cited because they're published in that journal, right? You cannot really decipher which kind of, uh, which kind of effect uh, uh, is here, right? So, so this kind of uh, relationship is not fully clear, right? So and some studies do not show the correlation between the impact factor and, uh, and the citations. Um, then there is a language of journal. Um, pa papers published in uh, English language journals are more frequently cited than those that are published in uh, multiple language journals uh, or journals in, uh, in languages other, other than English. Right? So it's, uh, it looks that the English is still the lingua franca of, uh, of science uh, at this point. Um, and there is a scope and coverage of journal. Uh, and it seems to be that the papers published in general journals uh, are cited more. Right? So for example, here's an example of Nature, which is really top prestigious journal in, uh, um, in life sciences. Um, and, but it's still kind of a journal. And it, it, I think it's similar in the management. So if you, if you publish in Journal of Management or Academy of Management Journal or this kind of top journals, then uh, those that are general would have more chances to be cited than those papers published in a, in a niche journal, on average, of course, on average. Um, so that's the scope and coverage of journals. Then you have a form of publications and presentation. 
And this is mostly the difference between conference publications and journal publications. And usually journal publications would have more citations than conference, uh, conference publications. Right. So in some fields, that would be a little bit different. Uh, uh, I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, computer science is a field that would publish more, more on conferences. Uh, that uh, that conference would, conferences would count, count, count much more than the, than the eventual uh, journal publications. Um, and then there's uh, author-related factors. Uh, now, first one is uh, the number of authors and, uh, and co-authorship. So if you have a couple collaborations, that are usually uh, will help getting the papers, uh, papers cited. Right? So um, this kind of uh, co-authors papers, so if you have several co-authors, maybe not all of authors can always go to conferences. Uh, more of authors can do research seminars, can promote the paper. And this is so-called the knowledge uh, confu uh, diffusion effect. Right, so, um, so co-authoring with other authors will help uh, uh, will help citations. Um, so, ah, and uh, if you if you connect, if you collaborate with with a highly visible co-author, that would also help uh, help achieve uh, citations. Um, and then there's of course author's reputation and previous citations. Right to the certain effect, uh, to the certain point, we have a, a Merton effect here in science. So uh, people who are um, who have published before in top journals, people who are cited a lot, tend to be cited even for even when they write about uh, uh, about new topics. Right? So prominence and prestige of author will of course help um, help the citation. So. There, that's a kind, kind of a double-edged sword if you want to collaborate with this kind of authors. If you want to collaborate with this kind of authors, uh, often this would influence citations positively. On the other hand, it might, uh, it might view the, um, pe other people might view the paper as their paper, not your paper, even though maybe you did most of the work. But if you collaborate with a famous, uh, famous academic, um, because of this Merton effect, you, they, they would get uh, a lot of a credit, even though maybe they're, they're some just by name or they just did a small thing in the paper. Uh, so, so this kind of prestige and the, and the previous citations of an author can be a good predictor of citations for uh, future papers as well. Um, ah. So then there's author's academic rank. Uh, so, um, senior uh, academics, chairpersons, professors, then associate professors, assistant professors, the, the, the more senior the rank would, uh, uh, would receive more of the citations. Um, and then uh, you have uh, the self-citations. So we were talking about the self-citations uh, uh, previously. Uh, we can have uh, more, let's say, uh, different kinds of self-citations on a different level, right? So uh, researchers from the same country citing other researchers from the same country, uh, citing other papers from your institution, uh, citations in a journal that cite this, the other publications in the same journal, and the, what we commonly refer to self-citation is uh, the author citing themselves. Uh, so, so this kind of self-citations, especially journal self-citations, can influence the number of citations. And, uh, but it, I mean, this kind of self-citations are usually not so big of an, uh, of an effect. Um, and the more cited uh, paper there is, the, the, le the less this kind of self-citation can, uh, uh, can make a difference. Um, then there's uh, author's country. Uh, if, uh, if an author is, uh, is privileged to work in a, in a country or institution that has a good financial support for research, uh, that will, uh, of course, help citations. So, for example, U.S. institutions would uh, usually receive more, more citations than institutions from other countries. Um, then you have author's productivity. So, even the authors, so there, there are certain authors who are very productive. They have a lot of co collaborations with other authors. And they would then, even because of those collaborations and larger networks, they would tend to have higher citation counts. Um, 
Then there is uh, organizational features. So what kind? Of, what is the department size? What is the department productivity? Do, do the fac faculty publish in, uh, in top journals? Um, and so on. Right? And uh, papers from highly ranked schools would tend to have more citations. But again, more, what is the what is the causality here? We have to be uh, we have to be careful. Um, then there is uh, funding and grants received by authors. So if, uh, if, there was, uh, if uh, the research was funded, if uh, uh, the author received the grant, then this makes it uh, more probable that uh, it will be highly, uh, highly cited than, uh, than otherwise. Um, so these are findings from, from pre previous research, right? So um, here are some maybe personal, my personal musings of what I, um, what I have, uh, have encountered so far. Uh, and one thing is publishing research at the beginning of a trend. And I think we, we talked a little bit about this, right? So if you're lucky enough uh, to, to, get the, to get a certain research at the, at the time of a takeoff, usually the, the early papers on a certain topic are more straightforward to write. And they would tend to be about bigger questions and would tend to be more cited. Uh, so the more researched one topic is, the more narrower the topic needs to be to be published, um, unless it is a it is a review. But uh, but uh, if you can get a certain trend at the beginning or near the beginning, then uh, then that's a good uh, good place to be and helps citations quite a lot. Um, then. Uh, I think one thing that really helps is uh, if you're embedded yourself in the community for a specific research topic. Uh, so then you can find collaborators that are working uh, with yourself. Uh, you maybe be an editor to a special issue. Um, you go to conferences, uh, you know people, they know your work, uh, they, they see your work, they may be the reviewers for, for your work. Um, um, so this is, I think this kind of paper promotion is, uh, I think it's very, uh, very important. So if you have a paper submitted at conferences, presented at conferences, maybe not once, maybe several times, uh, it has a double effect. You get, uh, um, you get comments that can improve the paper and the people see it. So it's basically a promotion for your paper. And often the reviewers will be, will be there. Um, uh, and, uh, and once I was told by, by a person when I was presenting a paper, oh, if you send it to this journal, it's very probable that I will be the reviewer. And I, th I, I, li I really like the paper, right? So, so this kind of, uh, this kind of prom promotion is, I think, important. Right? And uh, especially um, authors who have good connections with, uh, with top universities would basically go on the road and present in every department, different departments. This has become a little bit easier with Zoom and these uh, online presentations. But still, if you, if you do present the paper at your certain seminars, then you present in conferences, then by the time it gets to the journal, everybody knows about the paper. And, uh, and even that process make the makes the paper more refined than it would otherwise be. Um, so, so try to, to, to have a stream on research on, on a certain topic, get yourself known in the community, and this, uh, this will help the, the, com the community citing your papers uh, afterwards. Um, something that I was, I'm thinking about, um, you have to think about why your paper would be cited. Why, why would someone uh, uh, cite your paper? And I think, uh, I'm, I'm saying this, putting hooks for citations in your paper for the lack of the better, better term. But uh, you have to have some claims about the research field, about current state, about, I don't know, novel findings or future research directions that are interesting for other researchers. So if you, you can think about it maybe strategically when you're writing a paper. Right? So think about why would, would someone write your paper and try to embed this kind of claims um, that uh, that would be that would be citable. Um, we are already already talking about certain types of papers that get cited, and this is something I see a lot about reviews and uh, meta analysis. Um, so meta analysis is also a type of review, uh, which is more quantitative. But both of these kinds of uh, of papers they get cited a lot more. Um, 
put your papers online for free access immediately after they're published or even earlier as working papers. We're talking about that as well. And I think it's, it's, it's good to, to build your profile on so social media and do it more strategically. I'm, I'm active on social media, although I don't do it very strategically. So I, I publish on a lot of stuff and uh, I try to promote myself a little bit, but if you're strategic about that, it could have an effect. But sometimes you go to conferences and people know your name just because, uh, uh, just because of the social media uh, um, uh, uh, endeavors. I think especially Twitter is very popular uh, among academics. And if you maybe have a niche that you're writing about and you can write in, about it in a let's say, more, um, more interesting way, I think social media is a good way to, to build, a, build a profile. So I think Twitter and LinkedIn and, and the ResearchGate, of course, I think are the main, um, uh, the main uh, social media uh, networks for this. Um, I think this is, uh, this is from what I'm, uh, I'm experiencing and what I'm, uh, what I'm finding. So I think we, maybe we can have now the first, uh, uh, first of this, uh, these workshops. So I would say, can we maybe establish two or three groups uh, that could be uh, kind of mixed? So, so I don't want to just, uh, uh, just senior academics together or just early career academics together, but it would, uh, would be best if we have groups that have, uh, that have all the span of experience. So maybe if you could put together, I think well, there's how much, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 15, maybe three groups or two groups, what would be best? Three groups. Three groups, three. all right. So if we put three groups and then um, try, to, try to figure out uh, how would you improve citations for your existing publications and for your next publications. So what I would say to follow some kind of brainstorming process. So put the first phase, put all the ideas maybe on paper and then in the next phase, select three or five that you think are the best. And I'd say if everybody could contribute to that, and then you, in the joint discussion, you select three to five, uh, and then maybe, I don't know, what, what would you say? 15 minutes for this process, and then you come back and somebody reports for the group? Would that be all right? Yeah. All right, sounds good, so let's do it. All right, are all groups uh, done? Yes, yeah. All right, so let's, uh, let's see what have you come up with. So who, which group wants to go first? <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> so, by the way, he's, he's the managing editor of uh, ABDCB journal. Mm -hmm. uh, idea, what is it called? No, no I was journal of, journal of Emerging Market Financial Development. Mm -hmm. Now I'm doing Journal of Infrastructure and Development. So, so not an issue. we have a good campaign. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's start, let's start with the, with the group. <laughs> yeah. You were you were volunteered. Batman. Batman? <laughs> yeah, I always knew I was Batman. Batman? Hmm? All right. So to some point? I'll keep it uh, as simple as possible, right? And mm -hmm. as brief. <laughs> I'll I'll use this board. You can hear me at the mic. Right, not, not in Loud and So so two things. Uh, one about the existing uh, publications, how to improve, and the uh, one is about the future publication. Now we want to, what we have is a, uh, a set of strategy which, which, which follows the three particular things, we are going to target three things and, and they are going to be pretty much common with minor differences across the two. And the three strategies which we are going to do is target a person which involves a person, involves a topic, involves a delivery mechanism. So these are the three things. Okay, let me just swap this a little bit, let me do it with future, and then I will make this a this day. So person, anything which I miss out, you will have to uh, tell me, right? So what do I mean by a person? So one way of uh, you know, getting a high citation uh, is to identify a person with whom we can collaborate. Easier said than done, but it's better as I was saying that there are some actual okay, people whose name, whose, whose name comes a lot, and some of them actually have agreed to collaborate, saying that it is the work which we can do as it just okay. And one strategy of identification of that, and that what we were also discussing is suppose you pick up a research gate, right, 
and on a particular topic which you have rank order in terms of the citations and uh, age, age index, leave out the first quartile because they are very famous, they will not collaborate with you, but have pick up, pick up the second quartile. So there is an identification strategy. So identifying them and getting them to do. The next is the topic. So what is the what is the topic which you want to publish with your high high citation? And what we have discussed is one way to identify those kind of topics, sir, to, to pick up the special issues okay, of conferences, conferences journal, to which basically the special issues are something which are up and coming. They, they are they are kind of uh, they are kind of new. Uh, and in a cycle of about a year or two years from now, the citation should go because that's the that is a new topic now, but that going to be a hot, hot topic when the citation numbers are supposed to be there. That was pretty much the, what, what we wanted to do. Delivery is okay. Now, if you, have, if, you, if you think that the paper is going to get published or the paper is good, how do you ensure that what, what is the operation on delivery? So there we, we thought there, there would be three things which we, which we should be uh, looking at in, in terms of delivery. I think the... Uh, actually, actually, not three, but two, right? So one was on what will basically have it, put it up on open access. So obviously research gate is one, okay. SSRM, working paper series, working paper series probably in the, in the website. So these are all, these are all the academic parts. Right? And essentially you put it up, people who are in the academic, they will know. Because many of them probably are looking for papers. So once you put, put them up, you don't actually uh, knock at their doors with the idea. They actually come, they're looking for the spaces and they will pretty, pretty much get it. The, um, the other one is essentially what you try to use the social media. Now this is where you are trying to reach some people who would be otherwise not come in there, but you know once you can generate sufficient interest in them, they might be able to do that. So when we when the social media, we use Social media and communications is probably a better term to use because in social media, obviously, we are looking at uh, maybe some blogs related to the article, Twitters. So these are all the social media communication which we, uh, which we can think of, and definitely popular press articles based on the article. So we wrote, we write something, and you know, all the pop popular press. So basically, uh, this is going to go to mass. And the mass will also have potential academicians who will, right? So, whereas these are people who actually on a morning open their research gate profile looking for papers and what has to be done. So, that's pretty much the future problem. And then we got psyche lazy. So, we said the way to do the existing <laughs> one is convert the existing to the same formula. Okay? And not, don't change the strategy. So, what, what, what would be this? So you already have an existing publication which was done maybe 10 years back, which was good. So can we actually update that paper with the finding? Okay. So once you want to update, for example, you do a paper where the last data you collected was from 2010 to 2015, you published it, right? So what if you were to update that data now with the last five years data, how do the results compare and change? So it will not require a whole lot of work, but it will also be meaningful because that's what some of them would be doing with the paper probably anyway. But can you do that? If that's the case, you can still use this. Will you now get a you know, famous person to also collaborate, right? So basically what you're doing is you're converting that particular existing uh, paper, right? So when it comes to the topic, that goes blank, right? Because you know you may want to send it to a publication if it is of a of an interest. You may not want to send it to the original journal, but maybe maybe one run lower or a semi-similar kind of journal with the updated one and many times the updated might give a better data. So we can talk about examples, but I will say I will keep it. So that's the second thing. The third one okay, is the same. Because what you have converted is not the existing publication, you have converted an existing publication as a uh, new publication. Moment you kind of put, uh, bring that out, then the citation is probably will start happening with the new as well as the old one. Because you are because you are probably going to say this in 2014 found that. So we basically follow the follow the same thing. So the simple strategy, this is the strategy which we do, and this is the framework which I have to convert existing ones to the, as a new one. Okay, and then right. the, this is the a full, issue. very systematic uh, framework. <laughs> Any questions?
Uh, I didn't quite understand. You were, you were talking about updating topic with uh, existing publications. So what would, there would be new publications? Yeah, so, so I'm, I'm giving an example. You say, no, uh, suppose I want to do uh, uh, election social outcome in India. Mm -hmm. So we had a one election in 2014. You know, we looked at data profile and all. Mm -hmm. We have one more election now. So we have, mm -hmm. we have new set of data. Yeah. So what has changed? So has something changed and new things coming? Mm -hmm. Obviously, new things have come. Yeah, oh. more technology. Right. So similar research design on the new yeah, data and try to yeah. compare the historical. Okay. Because cool. that paper has now gone, has gone out of the memory. I'm mm. just retrieving that paper yeah. by not citing that old paper, but building on that paper and something mm -hmm. very similar. So yeah. new one can I mean, basically, I think it would be appropriate to cite it as well. Actually. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so we're citing that. Mm. But now I think I will get citation for this one as well as mm. that one. Because yeah. the paper should also have a comparison of what changed between 20, what, 15 to 2020. Mm. Right? All right, thank you. So, uh, who wants to go the next? Uh, okay. Without mask. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just a just a comment. I mean, if you, if those dissertations are online, Google Google Scholar would count that as citation automatically. Yeah. collaborations more international collaborations that ends up getting huge uh, traction 
another thing that we looked at was uh, podcasts. So we discussed and we spoke to the marketing team also. Can we leverage our marketing team to talk about or rather give out podcasts on topics that faculty are working on? Podcasts are very popular these days. Since people commute a lot, they listen to a lot of, at least I listen to a lot of podcasts on research topics. And faculty talk about or researchers talk about their ongoing research through podcasts. Brief, short, concise podcasts, you get a lot of information, it gets a lot of traction on that. Uh, yeah, I think uh, working paper series. Yes, I think anything else as journals, a journals. Yeah. Our own journals. Yes. We have our own glim journals and that is something that we discuss that we should leverage it. We have two different types of journals. One is in the field of infrastructure, but Professor Preeti is managing a more general management journal. Can we leverage these for our new publications? That way the journal also gets traction. We also sort of have an institute of interaction. So I think it's a win win in that case. Why would we say that? Sir? I think, you know, your in house journal, as an unwritten rule, could do not have in house faculty published for. Okay, okay. For and I wasn't aware of that. Uh, it was actually very good. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Very good for yes. practice. But then, how do we leverage these journals then? I mean, for. Uh, so uh, they're, 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 they're important authors to contribute first. Yeah. What if we are co authors in that? Good, that be okay? Good, but you know, to the extent possible, see, we will be running a problem, all Tata journals will have been there, we will be running short of a paper, and we have a good paper, right? We we'll do that, but it's not as part of a you know, deliberate targeting strategy. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. okay. But now, sir, if we include and expand our news letter, if the publications we have done with small snippets, and we are now giving the algorithms and this, now we can, whether we can give it to corporate world and that path, yeah, exactly. So that's what so we have uh, We include the publications in one quarter yeah. or one half into it. In that newsletter, we should have a section publication in this publication. Yeah, so we had a word with Bruno also about that. Whatever journals we write, can we, can the marketing team help us in that outreach? Also, can we have, like, host our journals on some glim uh, web page where we can use that URL uh, and then when people click on it, they are redirected to that. So, something that we could do. Nothing else, it just builds on what the format we write down. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, as, I, as, I said, uh, as, as I said earlier to one of the groups, uh, I will be the one learning the most today. So, uh, so I think that there's a, there's a couple of great ideas uh, here. Um, especially, I like the ones about webinars, and I'd so also say research seminars and this kind of things. If you have a, can have a research seminars for other PhD students or something like that, that would be also a good way uh, to uh, um, to market the work. In the Lumiere, do you think it would be a good idea to have a five ten minutes initial? Oh, uh, uh, yeah, why not? Yeah, yeah, the very very short pitches, like uh, like entrepreneurial pitch, right? Uh, about the uh, about the articles. I think about some simple uh, explanation. It's, uh, yeah, very simple, very very precise, very um, very de very condensed. That would be. I think that would be a good idea. Um, so last but not least, the third group. Millennial is a very generic topic, which is not particularly limited to a particular field. 
So anybody who's doing millennial research, we have a small paragraph on that, and that has got us a lot of citations. Mm. Because people who are working in maybe um, a political science area, they're also putting up paper. People working in finance area are also putting up paper. So the number of citations go up because of that generic thing, which is omnipresent across. You know, mm. That's uh, one thing that you can talk about. Another is um, when we are uh, getting, I think that Jodi mentioned that if we are getting review articles, we can always give out like this is a kind of a, because review we are doing for free. That's a kind of benefit mm -hmm. we get that we can recommend our articles in the, mm -hmm. because obviously the review that we are getting for the paper, the area that we are also researching on. So we can always give out our uh, There's a, there, it has to be done in a light way, so not to, uh, not too strongly, but yes. <laughs> this will be scrapped from the minutes. <laughs> Research on Twitter, uh, researchers on Twitter. There are a lot of researchers are there on Twitter. So, uh, mostly, uh, if you don't tweet, then it will not be considered in the government. Mm -hmm. So, that's uh, okay. Yeah, so that's about it. And then the topic. The topic, uh, the presentation was the topic should be catchy, trending, mm -hmm. and short, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, five words? Five to six, five to six words, yeah. then it has more traction. I didn't know that my latest article has a big top <laughs> Another, <laughs> Another is posting for recommendation and photos on uh, research gate. By putting uh, your articles on research gate and sending it to the wider network on Facebook and LinkedIn because Facebook and LinkedIn are designed. Could be a citation in Google Scholar. We'll never consider that because we do have our students project yeah. which mm. we, our research can be used. So we can do some academic project. Maybe write a bibliography introduction. Yeah, there's a, there's a course on research methods where we can give at least some of the faculty papers to review and uh, maybe we'll talk about the methodology. Mm -hmm. We can increase citations in that case. And then, you know, these summer projects, because like, summer projects could be the areas like, for example, sustainability and all these areas mm -hmm. where we can um, ask them to review at least to one of the faculty articles in their summer projects. So, maybe encourage them to have a research paper profile. They're an academic student. Yes. Right? Can we government for 80% or 20% if it is actually just good? I think if, uh, if one of the faculty is the uh, mentor for that project, then yeah. that will be the co author. So faculty can also put it up on the research right? project. Yeah, I'm not sure. Can we? If the faculty is co author on a project report, can you put up that on the research mm. page? It has a citation. I mean, Technically, it would count a citation, but I mean, if uh, then you have citations on on uh, on Google Scholar, and someone goes to look, and it's only this kind of citations, that's uh, yeah, that's a little bit yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, I don't, I wouldn't say it's uh, it's totally off the books, but uh, you have to be careful with this. Uh, so. You, you, 
So then they will yeah. really be reading some papers. I mean, it would be if, if, the, if the students are writing, I don't know, master's thesis or something, and the, 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 this is published online on the, on the website of the... All right. So, but uh, anything like like that would would count as uh, yeah. yeah but, uh, because that is paper, you know, like a one-year program. Uh, mm. Some of them, I mean, they are qualifying as masters. Those were the research projects. Research projects. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Summer, summer, yeah. 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 Those days. In the summer, some schools are doing research projects with the faculty. Not instead of uh, the industry mm. projects, some schools will be doing faculty yeah. projects. They would be considered as uh, pieces which yeah. I think this kind of things maybe could be used as, uh, let's say, for early citations to get uh, um, to get it started, to get attraction. But it wouldn't be look good if uh, then you g uh, someone goes to look and it's all this kind of citations. Yeah. So, so it's a uh, it's a fine line to to tread. Mm -hmm. which helped us improve that paper. Plus, uh, those people know that we are doing work in this. So we also get uh, suggestions or requests mm -hmm. that would be like to collaborate. So that's another way mm -hmm. to get collaborations. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. So uh, how much time do we have? Um, um, half an hour. Half an hour. So, so one thing. I would maybe like to do one one round of group discussions still. I think one thing that the one one good thing would be uh, what can uh, you do on the institutional level to improve this? Would this be a good topic? I think. All right. So so I'll just uh, um, okay. I have a couple more slides, but I'll just uh, I'll just mention some of the points here. Um, so so this, the second the second part of this uh, what I want to present is about impact, right? So we often say that citations are impact, but uh, citations are only one uh, one part of the impact that you want, right? Um, and one thing is uh, is also journal impact, right? So what makes a journal impactful? Is it uh, is it just the journal impact factor, which is a specific number? Or is it uh, is it more complex, right? So, and then journal journal impact factor has uh, has a lot of uh, let's say th there are some controversies about it, right? So, what are the motives for citations? Um, what is the measurement? So then uh, then there's uh, uh, self citations from the journal, uh, flattery citations, show off citations, and so on. So. How can we say that the journal, um, journal impact factor is really measuring what it's supposed to measure? Right? And then there's all sorts of, uh, of gaming things happening, right? So journals uh, wants to, uh, want to get better impact factor because that would mean that they're more reputable. So they would try to manipulate uh, things. So like I was saying earlier, they would try to uh, accept papers in, uh, in 2018 and then keep them online for a couple of years and officially publish them in two years. Right? So there are a couple of journals that do li like this, or or they would try to get more review articles in, or they would uh, actively seek publications in hot topics and so on. Right? Um, not all of these are straight manipulations, but there are various ways that journals try to improve their uh, their specific uh, uh, impact factors. Right? So there's a there's a lot of thing about wrong about uh, journal. Um, uh, impact factor, and one thing is also this so-called ecological fallacy. So, is uh, what is journal impact factor telling us about individual articles? Is it uh, is it predictive for individual articles? Because it could be very skewed, right? There could be a couple of very cited articles that are uh, increasing the impact factor, but uh, there could be some not so good articles in the in the journal as well, right? So, uh, so maybe on average it is a little bit predictive, but still for individual, um, we cannot really generalize or sp specifically say if a journal has a high impact factor, every article in this journal is good. Yeah. Uh, so we have to think about journal impact as a more, let's say, complex thing, right? So the Simshek and all uh, suggested that they would, uh, they, we could conceptualize uh, journal impact as a process of diffusion, right? So, um, so the, there are five underlying dimensions of this, right? Magnitude, speed, prestige, 
breadth and, uh, and reach. So if we want to talk more complexly about the general impact, we have to consider uh, all of those and not just mechanistically count the general impact factor. Um, and the other thing that I, oh, this is something that I wanted to show earlier. Uh, so this is the, this is the uh, percentage of articles that, um, um, the percentage of universities that get the most uh, of, the, of the citations, right? So basically, 25% of the, of the universities uh, get basically the almost, uh, almost close to 100% of the, of the citations. Right? So it's a very, it's very skewed uh, uh, um, uh, metric. And you have, uh, so, uh, so this is what, uh, uh, what we were dealing with. Um, OK, and um, the other thing I wanted to talk is about uh, what is the concept conceptualization of, uh, of the impact. So we're talking about impact, uh, often we, uh, we see it very narrowly. So we see it as, uh, um, as a citations. And citations, to a certain extent, they are, they are impact. But they're only impact in academia, right? So and we, see, we see impact as a, as a very narrow, uh, narrow concept, right? So in long term, um, this, is, this is not unsustainable. This is unsustainable. So we, we should think about how we impact other stakeholders. So how we impact our students, how we impact uh, the, uh, um, the, practic the practitioners, the managers, uh, the companies, and so on. Uh, or maybe also government and, the, and everybody who is, uh, who is around us. Yeah? So, so we shouldn't only go for citations, but we should try to also influence all of these constituents with our, uh, with our research. Right? So not just do publish research for career advancement, but also to try to, to find something meaningful, something relevant for the world that will improve the practice of companies, that will improve the, the practice of government, and help maybe other, our communities as well. Um, so, so this is the common approach is basically the, this narrow, uh, the narrow view. Right? Uh, so we have um, we have citations, we have so-called aid journals, and often uh, in some institutions, if you don't publish in aid journals, then uh, um, then that's detrimental to you. And also, uh, the, there is so much focus on publications that other uh, ways of impact are a little bit ne neglected. Right? So if you look at pluralist conceptualiz conceptualization of uh, of scholarly impact. We should also look how we influence students, um, how MBAs, uh, executives, government policy, um, and so on. Right? Um, so, and these are more kind of a non-zero, non-relationships uh, uh, between uh, between other uh, other constituents and uh, and business schools. Right? Um, and then we can think in a more more wide way how we measure the impact. Right. So not just by citation counts. Uh, but also try to try to see what is the impact of, on other stakeholders, and I think these are these are the things that are much more difficult uh, to measure. And so so often we measure those things that are easy to measure, and we neglect things that are also important but a bit more difficult uh, uh, difficult to measure. Um, so what are the indicators? Just a, a couple of so. Inside the academ uh, uh, academia, it would be citations, H index, I10 index, so number of publications with at least 10 citations, um, service to professional organizations, and so on. So indicators of impact um, outside the academy could be how many invitations to practitioners uh, events we get, how many, what is the number of practitioner publications, what is the media coverage of our, our work. Right? Do, or is there demand for, from the industry for our expertise? Right? The, have we published any popular business press books? Right? Are, are we as a witnesses in, uh, in, pro, in, in court cases? Right? So these are all indicators of impact that are not strictly confined to the, to the academia. Um, and then there's there, there are those who are who are um, overlapping, right? Both inside and outside academia, right? So how how many followers we have on social media? Uh, what is uh, how many books are we selling? Uh, what are the citations in textbooks? Uh, uh, is our work used to 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 construct textbooks for students? 
right? um, have we published the, the textbooks for students and so on. Um, and then there's so-called um, alt metrics, so different, uh, let's say, social uh, media indicators, uh, the number of bookmarks, the number of likes, clicks, mentions in blogs, mentions in Wikipedia, uh, mentions in news promotions, and so on. Right? So these are more alternative alt metrics kind of uh, indicators of impact. Right? So. Um, we, should, we should think about impact, as I say, more in a more broader way. So not just, a, not just the citations, but also about how we in, impact our other constituencies. Right? So for the last exercise, I'd say if you could discuss what could, uh, what could your institution do, right? So what, what can you do on an institutional level to, to improve both citations and impact more broadly? Right? So maybe immediately, what can be done in the next year? What can be done in uh, the medium term? And I, I hear you're do, already doing a lot of these things, but we can still try to brainstorm uh, what, uh, what else can, uh, can we do. Right? So shall we reassemble the groups and have, what, 15 minutes for discussion, and then we'll report back. Yeah. Uh, I think we have now two groups only, I'd say. Uh, and uh, I think it's appropriate that this group starts, and they were the last for the previous. In the previous round. Okay, so these are not my notes actually, so I'm just trying to make sense. So you are removing yourself from it. Just, <laughs> just, just a hint, this is a good time to ask for money. <laughs>
so uh, like we uh, we rolled out certain series uh, by our marketing team they prepared series meet the faculty series on youtube so there the faculty are discussing uh, in general about themselves similarly we can make uh, more videos wherein faculty discuss about their research interests in particular and uh, the papers that they are working on so probably that would gain more traction and uh, uh, that will give us more visibility and probably more citations people would uh, watch those videos would probably uh, reach out and look at our papers and cite them so yeah that's it okay all right thank you and you are writing the note you are writing the note you are writing the note I just cite you. I just cite you. I have a, I have a medical report on COVID. I cite you. Everyone. Is that me? Huh? Is that? Why are you opening yourself up? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's fine. What's that? I see. I was. It works. Works. Oh. Mask is not required in London. So we were looking at uh, trying to uh, brainstorm on the question: How can institution help? So I think one of the conclusions is that currently our communication, outbound communication, institutionally. across all media whether digital or otherwise is largely targeted and this is for bruno jo sun nahi raha suno suno class mein baitha hai yaar it is all targeting students and to some extent corporate it is admissions and recruitment that's all our communication is all about so one of the suggestions somebody you said that about the video series so we said that for example uh that's a smaller part, part of what we were thinking that currently the website that we have of the institute it is again targeting these two stakeholders students parents and practitioners that is corporate if at all by the way the corporate uh, angle is also not very clearly coming and there's not a criticism this is just a status symbol So I think we need a grim. If we are looking at grim Gurgaon or grim totally, I don't, I don't mind. We need a special website or a portal for research, academics, etc., where greater detail. For example, somebody said that in our list of faculty, I think only Professor Jones has his email ID. Other faculty email ID is also not there, right? तो अभी मैंने देखा नहीं पता चला सो वी नीड टू लुक एट क्रिएटिंग अ स्पेसिफिक प्रेजेंस फॉर रिसर्च एकेडमिया बिकॉज़ राइट नाउ द प्रेजेंस इज स्टूडेंट्स एडमिशन मार्केटिंग रिक्रूटमेंट इफ वी हैव दैट काइंड ऑफ अ प्लेटफॉर्म देन अ सजेशन व्हिच पपाय मेड सम टाइम बैक आल्सो दैट if we are using some data we have collected some data and we have published something on it why not share that data set along with the paper on this so with the condition that people can use this data for their own research citing our papers that is proposal was there in the academic council correct so this is where it is coming from then uh, ivan talked about um, how publishing in open source increases citation but the caveat is that in all open source publication there is some money involved some fee is to be paid he said that some universities in uk are now having some kind of a budget which might have some rules regulations etc uh, but if that can be done then there is more open source because i know that professor jones Let's have a look. Plus, by the meeting will be the next. Next meeting, noted. Right. Uh, then there is a suggestion that we need to have a in-house. When I say in-house, it is in campus. An in-house social media. You also said this. Social media digital communication coordinator. 
who is able to channelize all this communication towards the right audience, which is different from what the main website uh, does. Uh, uh, so the idea of a research coordinator that we were discussing again is also one key point here because uh, somebody who keep track, keeps track of you know uh, what all new opportunities in publication is coming up and then uh, frankly it should come from the library right but the library right now doesn't work like that so these are some of the additional things apart from what Padrima already shared Anything else? I would maybe add, uh, if you share this kind of data, some kind of uh, calls for funding as well, right? So if, if there are some calls that they have money to, to give away that you can apply, I think it would be good that it would be shared. Um, about calls for funding, right? So there's various yeah. institutions that, uh, I, I know, maybe you already do that to share among the faculty, but uh, I mean, probably everybody is not not uh, uh, looking at these sites all the time. So if, uh, if this was shared, I don't know, twice a month or something, or once a month, uh, to, uh, to everybody, I think it would help for, for getting funding for research. Here, we have a very elaborate uh, mm -hmm. system of incentives mm -hmm. for publication. All right. And we are very liberal. We provide incentives for even publishing on popular media. Mm -hmm. And a lot of this uh, sort of becomes a challenge, and this was in another meeting we were discussing, that what is considered by regulator as research mm -hmm. For example, case studies are not considered as research, mm -hmm. right? So for regulatory purposes, we have to have journal publication. Mm -hmm. But internally, we have incentivized non-journal publication also. Mm -hmm. So that's a very good practice. I have not seen it in many other institutions mm -hmm. I have been part of. So that's already we are doing. So we have, and, and it's quite a substantial uh, amount. It comes to every year, mm -hmm. pretty substantial. Uh, this year it will come to be a very, very big amount, I can see that. Mm -hmm. So it is about 3 to 5 million rupees. Mm -hmm. So that we are doing. Mm -hmm. But this additional thing is for this open access if we have to pay. But this person mm -hmm. is very important because I was thinking whatever events they are planning, uh, we can't coordinate. It's a, it's a photo shoot video. Suppose she does the, mm -hmm. there is a person, how does she get started? There has to be somebody responsible for that. She will only shoot the video, right? Time, venue, slot, when, water, what. Yeah, there has to be somebody responsible. So I think That's what this one person is, I think this person is very important. Research on the Yeah, it is a complicated delimitation. I am also not. I am really serious. I am really serious. And maybe by uh, next 15 days, I will do zero. Now. No, no, you don't know. This is an English video. Good policy. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. All right. I uh, think this brings us to the conclusion, right? So I think thank you, thank you everybody for your inputs. I think uh, were great inputs, and I learned a lot from today's uh, session as well. I hope you learned something uh, um, as well. And I think uh, it was really great to be here. And thank you, everybody, for, for the participation.
So, Jones, Professor Jones Matthew has been very, very instrumental in culminating Sanyal sir's vision into a mission. So, we have vision, mission statement. So, please. <laughs> To convert that in a, into a tangible format for organizing this workshop, getting Dr. Ivan to present and uh, you know getting this workshop actually from ground zero. So thank you, Joel, sir. And of course, to all our attendees present here, you took out time to uh, from your teaching schedules to attend this and also <coughs> to have this lively back and forth discussion, which also was useful for our own learning as well. Uh, a shout out to the IT team; they have done a phenomenal job in ensuring a seamless delivery for the entire workshop. And of course, to the admin team to manage logistics, to ensure the infrastructure is in place, to have a smooth running session. So overall, thank you very much. Marketing. Yes, marketing team. We have to thank you and we are le hoping to leverage your support in all our research endeavors. So thank you very much. So imagine we are going to leverage it. We are, we are. <laughs> Jana, because he's your student, you are bullying him. You are bullying him. And it's too much. Thanks Thank a lot, uh, Dr. Zulfik. Uh, great to have you on campus. We've met so many times virtually. And we've met physically earlier also. Mm -hmm. Thanks for agreeing. Thanks for having this very nice workshop. And we look forward to having your inputs as an RAC member also, as well as for the workshop yeah. whenever it comes up. Thanks so much. Right. Thank you for the invitation. And uh, Ivan, I have a request to you. You can also connect us to a few more research scholars like you, mm -hmm. uh, whom we, we can. You know, our endeavor is to only take this institute forward. You have all right. The young institute and need help of all people like you. Mm -hmm. So if you have got friends who are really uh, can help us, mm -hmm. uh, we will have to get connected. I'll try to help as much as I can. So of course, yeah. I think you see. I think it's a great institution. It's up, up and coming. So I think very ambitious. I see as well. So I think that's good to good to see. 